This has been about two days of um, face pain, dental pain. You said it's, you know, basically have some swelling. We're doing a little temporary numbing right now as we're getting ready to do a local injection. We have our dentist working with us here today. So, you're okay with this uh, video being made? Yes, sir. All right. So, you have your upper teeth. It consists of three different major nerves the PSA, which is the posterior superior alveolar nerve. And you got the MSA, the middle superior, and then the ASA. The PSA, what you want to do is you want to get behind, you want to get behind the second molar, and then take the needle and infiltrate the vestibule about seven millimeters up in there, and then place the injection that will block the nerve. Then you have the MSA, same thing, vestibule seven millimeters. Anterior is above the canine, apex of the canine about seven millimeters. You want to inject in there. However, for the maxilla, most the bone is very porous, mm -hmm. and so and it's local anesthetic penetrates very well into the bone. And so, matter of fact, most most dentists just all they ever do is infiltrate the tooth that is bothering the patient. On the yeah, you're gonna work when you're up on the maxilla. Correct, correct. Otherwise, you on the on the mandible, you're doing the inferior alveolar nerve blocks. That's correct. Okay. So the the bone in the in the mandible is more dense, so anesthetic won't penetrate it. There is an anesthetic septicane that will but you guys don't carry it to the hospital. Okay. So what you have to do for that one is, I'll just show that one since we're not giving that injection. I'm just gonna leave this cap on, okay? So I'm not actually gonna give you an injection. Let me get you to open up for me. What you wanna do is you wanna just palpate. You'll feel the, the ramus, and you're just gonna push your finger straight back in there, and you'll feel a little divot. Mm -hmm. and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the needle, come across from the second premolar on the opposite side, and then you're gonna stick the needle in, and advance it, and if you're using uh, one of these long needles, these yellow needles, you're gonna take it about three quarters of the way all the way in, but you're gonna bring it in across the, sh you'll, you'll actually nick the bone, you'll feel it. Mm -hmm. Once you feel the bone, if, because every person's a little bit different, um, once you feel the bone, you might have to manipulate the needle while you still leave it in the mouth and advance a little bit further back. Okay. And then what I do is I deposit about- Are you shooting medial to the bone? Medial to the bone, correct. Right. Correct. And so what I do is normally deposit about a half a carpal, and then as I'm pulling back, I just keep dumping a little bit more anesthetic. And the reason why is this actually gets the inferior alveolar art, uh, nerve. nerve. And as you pull back, you're going to get the lingual. The lingual, the lingual is right. actually before that one. But what I do is I give actually give a little bit as I'm advancing a little bit too. Okay. But then when I pull back, I start just depositing it as I pull back like that. And that usually gets the lingual nerve. It's a pretty easy one to get. All the teeth, all the way down to the the central incisor okay. on the same side. Um, however, the whole buccal mucosa still feels sensation. Okay. So what you want to do is give the long buccal injection. Okay. And you just want to come right to the outside of the ramus here, and you're going to advance it in about about seven centimeters, uh, millimeters again, okay. and deposit the anesthetic. You got to be on the that's out, lateral of the, of the bone. Lateral okay. of and the that's bone. the long buccal. That's the long buccal. Got it. And that will be good, good enough for him. As far as the upper, every time uh -huh. you infiltrate, it will get the mucosa on the outside too. So only in the, the mandible do you got to do that. Rarely, let's say just hypothetically, you can't get a patient numb. Sometimes it's the myohyoid. Very rarely, it's like 2% of patients have an innervation from the myohyoid. You're just going to take the needle, drop it straight down to the palate. Obviously, you're going to aspirate to see if you got a positive aspiration, mm -hmm. and then deposit a little anesthetic. Okay. All right. So we'll demonstrate the... What I'm going to give to him is an MSA, because that's where the tooth is broken. If you can... Um, we could bend, bend the needle slightly like this, just to get the right angle. Not too far. I'm only bending it because I'm not bearing the needle to the hub. Okay. That way, so just in case it does break off, I can yeah. grab it, still grab it and pull it out. But I'm only going to take it in about this far. Okay. So, and you sh just a little pinch, it won't be bad. See yeah. where his tooth is broken? That's actually yeah. a second premolar. That's where you want to block the MSA. Okay. The buccal vestibule is right there. Can you see it right there? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hand all the way. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to advance a little bit. I give a little bit as I go. There's no major arteries right here. When you do the PSA, there is a lot of major arteries that run through there. So you do need to aspirate. Once I got it in about this far, I'm going to push back. No, as no positive aspiration. And deposit the anesthetic. And if you like your patient, what you'll do is you'll go in with the lidocaine first. Because it's really fast acting. Okay. Other than carbocaine, carbocaine is the fastest. 
If you come in with lidocaine, you'll get it numb faster. Okay. Then you're going to come back with mepivacaine, which is our, I'm sorry, marcaine, which is bupivacaine. And it is a longer duration, but it takes much longer to set in. So okay. once he's numb in that area, I'm going to come back with bupivacaine and give him a block with that. Okay. All right. Is, is it starting to numb up for you? Yeah. It takes about seven minutes for lidocaine, but usually people start feeling it within about three minutes or so. Now, we've already given you a couple of Percocets. Um, it, your pain was 11 out of, on a scale of 10 when it came in. Now what is it? Actually, it's the other. It's better now because I'm starting not feeling anything. You'll start getting heavy here. When I give you this second injection, this PSA, um, about two minutes after that, it'll kick in. So, so this is the PSA. This one you got to get a little bit further back for. So I'm going to take my mirror. This might actually help. Okay. Open up for me. I'm just going to get back here. So this is your PSA block. That is correct. He's really swollen, so it's hard to push the cheek out. I'm going to take it up. I'm going to aspirate because there's a... What's, the your max landmarks, what's your landmarks for the PSA? It's going to be just posterior to the second molar in the buccal vestibule. Uh -huh. The maxillary artery runs right through here, so you most likely, most of the time, you do get a positive aspiration. And... I don't really follow the book because they always say use half half a carpule, quarter mm -hmm. carpule. I always just use the whole thing. The toxicity of lidocaine is so minimal uh -huh. that I always give a carpule every time I infiltrate. So. Okay. What were you saying? I'm say I can't feel it, man. <laughs> so all the pain. So it took about four minutes or so. Yeah. The pain's gone now. Good. This will give you. Now this is a good keynote to actually make. Okay. According to research, marking is. Uh, has a sorry about that. Has a duration of about four hours of analgesia, an, anesthetic effect. Okay. However, if you block the nerves, so not infiltrate, but you actually go to the nerves and block the nerves with marcaine. Yeah. You can actually get 20, 24 to forty-eight hours analgesic effect. So it won't be numb, but supposedly the pain actually, will be reduced. Exactly. Correct. Okay. Very good. Very good. So, so anytime we do a major surgery, whenever we're about to walk the patient out the door, we always block with marcaine. And that will give them plenty of time to get to their... their Drug farm. store. Exactly. Yep. Let's see here. All right, so just the same. Can we see here? Yeah. Good. It's going to infiltrate the vestibule. Now, which block are we doing now? This, this is, is the MSA. This is the MSA. MSA. It's okay. adjacent to the second premolar. Okay. And with Marcaine, because I already gave the lidocaine, I usually give a half carpule. Okay. And then I'll take the other half back here. Yeah. He's doing good. He's got a high pain tolerance, too. He didn't jump the first time I gave him an injection. The MSA and the ASA, you never really... I mean, you should always aspirate, but there's no major artery back there. Okay. The PSA, you'll come back okay. about 50% of the time with a positive aspiration. So, And if you do get a positive aspiration, all you need to do is deposit a little bit of the anesthetic because there's epinephrine in it so it'll cause vasoconstriction and prevent a hematoma and okay. then you're going to pull out of the vein this time and All then right. re recheck your aspiration and then deposit it deposit okay the whole anesthetic. good excellent